Ken, Jason Ross here. How are you? I'm well, Jason. I'm sitting in the A's dugout as we speak, watching the ball club take BP. Oh, that I mean, just this that just sounds good, Ken. How awesome is it to be back yeah. in action following the team and traveling with him too? Well, we hadn't traveled since two thousand nineteen and you know, we had a different perspective on the games, that's for sure, than watching the road games on a TV monitor. I uh, had a long night of travel getting back from Toronto yesterday. Mm. So one of the things, as you know, Jason, and we've talked about it, the Bay Bridge series is always great to get the guys acclimated to be back here in the Bay Area, get places to live, and there was always a day off there. So maybe it's less than ideal there in the midst of playing 17 consecutive <laughs> days, but uh, you know they'll be ready to go tonight. Well, and what you've seen for 10, I mean, again, doesn't make the whole season, but that road trip to start, that's brutal. Philly, Tampa, and Toronto. And I thought the A's, again, I was almost as impressed in their losses. Some of the, the fight they had in some of those games, even that extra inning game that they had a great comeback against Tampa, ultimately lost. But I, I felt like they put up a fight in just about every game that they ended up losing. And, of course, the five wins are icing on the cake there. That's right. And ordinarily, you wouldn't say maybe that, you know, Five wins is a great trip, but when you consider the competition, uh, three teams that really were intent or are intent on the postseason, uh, the Phillies, the Rays, and the Blue Jays, and you're right, Jason, they, in every game they lost, they were in those games. So competitive baseball. So, they, you know, it was good baseball for those 10 games. Yeah, and I think they're doing it. I think what's surprising to me, and you, you you could speak on this better than I could, Ken. I mean, when you have your your roster stripped down as they did this off season, you, and there's probably wondering about the order. How are they going to get some runs? But here they are as one of baseball's better offenses. That, for a fact, has surprised me. How about you? Yeah, well, for sure. And you know, going into yesterday, they had scored 50 runs, and 23 of those runs had come on eight swings. Wow. So you know, I'm not sure that's a sustainable model, but. <laughs> Five three-run homers, a grand slam, and two two-run homers. But they've been really good with runners in scoring position, mm-hmm. uh, which I, I think is, you know, that's a great recipe for success. So, um, And it's kind of an ensemble from the standpoint that they have a lot of guys who contributed. You've seen 10 games now as Mark Kotze is the manager. That's certainly not going to give him the full resume. But what's different? What do you like? What do you see between him and Bob Melvin that's, you know, there's some subtle differences well, there. Well, I don't think it's fair for Mark to even, you know, compare Mark in his first year to Bo Mel, who's done this for a long time and is now the all-time winningest manager in Oakland A's history. But, and I was talking to Mark a little bit uh, prior to us recording the manager show today, and he, he, the thing is he understands the responsibility. And it could be a little jarring for a first-year manager. He spent a lot of time with the media before the game that is, you know, with opening day a lot of attention on the club. And so he would, he'd rather be out there while the team was taking batting practice and spend time with his players. But I think he, he really gets the responsibility. He embraces the fact that, uh, they're multi, you know, they're, it's, it's a multifaceted job from that standpoint. So, and he's been very upbeat. And, and I think in a situation that that's difficult, uh, Jason, not only the four trades, that you know the big trades that happened while the club had already reported a spring training, but now they've been hit really hard with the COVID list. Yeah, uh, and seven new players have joined the team beginning on Friday. But he stayed remarkably positive, and I think that's been a that's a real attribute that he has. Yeah, I saw that note seven. So how is that? Is what kind of impact is that going to have? Let's say tonight in this series. Well, you're you're minus Puck, Snead, Trevino, Allen, Lowry, Pinder, and Piscotty. Wow. You know, that's a big group, but um, their feeling is, and you know, the A's have really preached versatility. Uh, I mean, they're going to miss those guys for sure. But for us, I mean, the way I kind of try to look at it is that there are good stories there. Like if Nick Allen gets into a game in the next couple of days that'll mark his major league debut, he's one of their better prospects. So I think they, the way they look at it, it's not just a 28 man team. It's the big league club. It's the triple A team. And I think there are a lot of guys, they're going to get a shot this year. You know, Ken, when I watch them or listen to you on the call, it, it feels like, you know, every team ends up with, with some sort of team leader, someone on the diamond that kind of is the voice or carries the, the team in a lot of ways. It sure looks like Elvis Andrus means a ton to this team. What's his impact right now? Huge, hugely impactful. I'm glad you mentioned that, Jason. I was kidding him the other day because we were on the last bus over to the ballpark and he was sitting where the manager normally sits, which is the front seat on the right side 
of the bus. And I said, you know, Elvis, you're going to be sitting in that seat permanently someday, right? Not just on one trip to the ballpark, because I really believe that he has a chance to manage someday. So he's a hugely impactful player. Uh, he loves to play. And, and the perception, this is really a, a young club. It's actually not that young a team. They've got some guys who've been around, and uh, he really is a key guy. Did he say, is that what he wants to do later, Ken? Does he want to manage? He did. He, he said, this is what he said. He said, I'd like to enjoy my kids first. <laughs> <laughs> Good for him. Good for him. Yeah. As we're talking with Ken Korak, the voice of the Oakland A's, A's have their home opener. You're going to hear it later tonight here on Sports 1140 KHTK. Uh, Christian Pache is is you know that big centerpiece in that Matt Olson deal. When he hit that opposite field home run the other night, that was that was tremendous. We know what he can do with his glove. As you've seen him through ten, I know he's the big prize piece of that deal. What what do you think the potential is for him? Sky's the limit. I think you know you hate to put that on a guy, but I think it's it's real with him. Uh, he is legitimately, a, I think, a five-tool. Maybe he doesn't have all five tools refined quite yet, Jason, but he has a chance to be a special player. He's electric, and I think he's a guy, and I've said this on the air, the fans are going to want to buy a ticket and come out to watch play because he's already an extremely accomplished center fielder. He's gifted in many ways. And then, like you said, if you take a 97-mile-an-hour fastball mm. and hit it out to right center for a home run, it takes some talent to do that for sure. Yeah, I know you just got done seeing uh, Toronto as well, seeing Chapman and boys. Look at that lineup and for the A's to get through there, uh, you know, and, and do okay against that team and Vlad Guerrero. That's that team's good, isn't it? Oh, they're really good, and they didn't have Teoscar Hernandez yeah. for the series. And but you know they they you know they lose yesterday, but they hold them to four runs. And I'm not sure that the Blue Jays is going to be held down to four runs that often. Yeah. Because they can, they can really rig. So, uh, you know, the A's, I think they pitched better than I thought on the, on the road trip. I was pretty concerned about their bullpen. But for me, the bullpen has exceeded expectations. So, but, uh, yeah, and, and think about the, the Jays is that, you know, last year they started in Dunedin. Then they went to Buffalo. And it wasn't until July 30th before they were able to go back and play in their home ballpark. And so the fan, and they're Canada's team. Their team is coast to coast. Their TV ratings are incredible, and they got a kind of, they have a team that you know they're going to sell a lot of tickets to watch those guys play this year. Well, and as you said, Ken, pitching is so critical. No matter if you have a full staff of aces or or beginning pitchers, who knows? But what have you seen from guys like Dalton Jeffries and even uh, Blackburn the other day? They've had a couple of good outings so far. They both fish well. Uh, obviously, Frankie Montas is their ace, and he's going tonight. But uh, Blackburn's given up only two runs in 10 innings so far. And Jeffries has pitched well. He, he came out in the fifth the other day, but uh, two runs against the Jays is not that bad an effort. So um, I, I'd like to see them eventually get deeper into games. Uh, obviously, everybody, uh, every team in baseball is, is dealing with the short spring, and that's affected starting pitching. Yeah. But, um, but, you know, when, when Montas pitches, uh, the A's become a really good ball club. At least they're, you know, they're hoping for that tonight. Yeah, he's on the mound tonight for the home opener. Home opener is always special. I don't know if there's any uh, special fanfare going on today, but uh, what's what's home opener mean for you? Well, I think as a on a personal note, I think this is my hometown team, and I, mean, I wasn't wasn't born and raised here, but I moved here in 1979. Yeah, I used to come to the games as a fan, and you and I have talked about it. And then to think that I've been lucky enough to do their games for 27 years and the support that I've received from AS fans, I don't take that for granted. It's meant the world to me. And so um, it's always emotional uh, for me to start a season and, and just realize that I've been to have my career and to have it happen here in Northern California has been an, an incredibly special thing for me. That's awesome. And I know it's uh, it was good to be on the road for the first 10, but I know you'll love this homestand, Orioles in, and Texas. Ken, uh, we look forward to the games. Uh, we look forward to tonight. Thank you for joining us, and uh, keep up the great work. Anytime, Jason. Thanks for having me, man. You got it. That's the great Ken Korak. You'll hear later tonight right here on KHDK.